Here are five things God will allow to happen in your life to let you know that you should pursue something more with this person that you have chemistry with. Number one, if you have chemistry with someone and you have a similar Christian worldview with this person, this probably means God wants you to pursue something more with this person. When I use this phrase, have chemistry with someone, I'm talking about that romantic spark that is present between some men and some women. This obviously isn't a biblical or unbiblical phrase, but what it is describing is something that can be used in a biblical or unbiblical way. If you are a Christian, you can have romantic chemistry with a non-believer. You can share similar interests, hobbies, and even have very similar personality traits. But even if you have this type of earthly romantic chemistry with someone, this isn't a sign God wants you to pursue something more with this person if they are an unbeliever while you are a believer. As 2 Corinthians 6.14 explains, So chemistry is not enough. But it's also important to quickly point out that having a biblical compatibility is not enough for you to pursue something more with someone either. So when both a romantic chemistry and a similar Christian worldview are present between you and another Christian single person, this could be a good sign God does want you to pursue something more with this person. Number two, if God is allowing that normal chemistry singles have to grow into something deeper, this is a good sign God is leading you to pursue something more with this person. That initial chemistry is not enough. It is simply like that first spark that happens before a good fire is formed. When you are building a campfire, there needs to be lots of elements present for it to work. That initial spark is just one element. But if there is no kindling or flammable substance that will then ignite the larger sticks, which will then ignite the larger logs, a lasting fire will never occur. And this process can't be rushed. A spark doesn't rapidly turn into a bonfire. It takes time for this to form. Likewise, you will have many sparks throughout your life with many different Christian singles. This is normal as God made there to be a unique connection between men and women. You can see this in 1 Timothy 5, 1-2. Notice that Paul highlights the special care Timothy should take when interacting with younger women in his season of life compared to other people he will interact with. It states, Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, in all purity. Paul divides people into four categories for Timothy. There are older men, younger men, older women, and younger women. But notice that only after his direction about younger women does Paul add an extra word of wisdom in all purity. Clearly, Paul knows there's an extra level of complexity for Timothy because he is younger. So when dealing with singles around his age, Paul tells him to be extra cautious towards these sisters in Christ out of love and respect for them. The point I'm making here is that though you can have many little sparks of chemistry between you and many other singles, because God made the attraction between men and women, this is not enough. God will also need to give you other ingredients and the necessary time together for this little spark to turn into something more. Number three, if you are in a season of life where courting is not the wisest approach to pursuing marriage, this could mean God is leading you to pursue something more with this person you have chemistry with. The traditional Christian courting model requires there to be a long season of friendship between a single man and woman that mostly takes place in a group setting before they should then proceed into courting. I'm personally not one to advocate for a strict courting model unless the man and woman involved are young adults who still live under their parents' roof and this is what their parents want them to do. But for normal Christian single adults, I think the courting model is too legalistic and usually does more damage than good. For mature Christian single adults, you don't need to be friends with someone for years before dating them. You can guard your heart and theirs by being honest about your romantic interest while still taking things slow. I'll talk more about this in point four, but the point here is that if you are a mature Christian single adult in a season of life where you are ready to get married if God revealed the right person to you, there's nothing wrong with exploring a relationship with someone that you have chemistry with. Even if you have not been friends forever, it can be wise to just go on a few dates and see where things might go. Talk and get to know each other. And then, if you both sense that there is something more there than a mere surface-level chemistry, 
Perhaps then God is leading you both to enter into an official dating relationship with each other. But if you always need long periods of friendship before dating and you never pursue something more with other single Christians that you have chemistry with, you may never experience something more because the courting model very often stalls momentum and hinders anything from forming. Whatever path you choose, never compromise on God's biblical rules for relationships. But also, don't be so guarded that you never form a connection with someone. Proverbs 4.23 states, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. It doesn't say you should put your heart in an impenetrable vault and never allow yourself to pursue someone you have chemistry with. Yes, guard your heart and be wise, but don't cut yourself off from the possibility of marriage one day by being so guarded in singleness. And if you want to show your support for me and this channel, tapping the subscribe button is one of the best ways you can do that. And this will also ensure that you don't miss any of my new videos that I post every single week. Number four. If you have built a solid foundation in friendship, but then there arises some romantic chemistry between you two, this could be a sign God wants you to pursue something more with this person. People fear trying to date their friend because they fear ruining their friendship. But really, there are usually only three options for this type of friendship over the long haul anyways. First, either one person starts liking the other person, but the feelings are not mutual, so this then permanently changes the dynamic. Second, one person starts dating someone else and gets married, and thus this obviously changes the dynamic. Or, number three, there is mutual interest and the two start dating each other. They either then get married or break up. But either way, this then obviously changes the dynamic. This happens because most singles have a longing to be married. And this is good, because God made it this way. God didn't make singles to long for a lifetime friendship with people from the opposite sex. He made most singles to want a spouse. As Paul said in 1 Timothy 5, 11-12, But refuse to enroll younger widows, for when their passions draw them away from Christ, they desire to marry and so incur condemnation for having abandoned their former faith. Paul told Timothy to teach younger widows not to dedicate themselves to a life of singleness, because Paul knew that most widows will want to remarry eventually, and that is good. My point is, if there is a romantic chemistry forming between you and a friend, this probably means God wants you to pursue this because long-term friendship between the opposite sex is not as valuable as marriage is for most singles. And this is by God's design. Don't worry about this changing your friendship because eventually your friendship is going to change anyways. Usually, this is worth the risk because a friendship is nice, but a spouse is better. And number five, if God is leading you to pursue something more with that person you have chemistry with, he won't promise you a particular future, but he will release you to walk into the future. This is a subjective topic we've been talking about, so we have to do our best to prayerfully apply God's word to the unique relationship situation we all find ourselves in. As Ephesians 6, 18 instructs, and pray in the spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayer and requests. When you pray about this type of thing, at some points in life, God will simply tell you not to pursue something more with that person you have chemistry with. And then at other points, he will tell you to pursue something more with that person you have chemistry with. But you have to ask each time. What he rarely does is tell you the whole future. Certainly don't get ahead of God or disobey his leading. Again, pray about what God wants you to do, and then if you sense God leading you to take a wise relationship risk, do it so that you can see what might happen between you and this person you have chemistry with. Don't sit on the sidelines forever. If you and this person are both Christians who love Jesus, and there is a romantic chemistry between you two, there's nothing wrong with you pursuing something more with this person to see what might happen if God is releasing you to try this. Here's two more videos if you want to keep learning with me. Until next time, God bless.